Hello there, everyone. It's Christy. Welcome to another episode of Feminist Talk Back. And this week, I am very pleased to have as my guest, Natalie Alford, and she's got her own channel. So Natalie, why don't you tell people a little bit about the last video that you put up? Hello. Thank you, Christy. Uh, what you call it? Um, well, the last video I did was actually Safe Space for Europeans. Um, it was after the alt-right, um, the one with uh, Richard Spencer, I believe, or he, the one who did like that conference of the Zeke Heil, and uh, it was about, in the Mike Pence tweet, it was about uh, basically conservative and white supremacists are asking for safe spaces, literally using the term safe space. And that was fascinating to me. So that was my last video on explaining how the hypocrisy of it was kind of astounding that now the right wing is pushing for this like no we want a sp safe space yeah that's great and for those of you who think that sounds interesting uh the just links for natalie's video and her channel will be below in the description box so go yeah. and check that out thank you yeah. Yeah, so on feminist talk back we start with questions there were more questions than we could reasonably get to so I've taken um, about five of them and we're going to answer them in this session and then the other ones will be put forward to the next episode that will be uh, being broadcast at the end of this month. So from Alfisish, I think is the pronunciation of that mostly consonants grouped together. Question, uh -huh. <laughs> question for the next episode. In what places of the world do men have rights that women do not have and what are those rights? Or maybe give a different example of a men of men have a right and women do not have in place X. Well, if you're talking about places in the world, uh, Natalie, I think we can talk about lots of places in the world. We could where... talk about, I mean, do you want the book? <laughs> I, I, I'm not trying to be facetious, but um, obviously, you know, there are plenty first that I think about Saudi Arabia, women cannot drive. Um, and also there are certain laws, uh, I know in Jerusalem, uh, you, if there's a case of rape, if you report rape, uh, you cannot uh, testify. I believe there was a very fascinating uh, documentary or that you need um, at least another person, like uh, in certain countries, you need two women to testify against uh, one man. Oh yeah, well, I mean, you've got all kinds of issues around, you know, even property ownership and women's ability to economically earn amount of money that they could live off of financially, you know, in terms of yeah. the wage gap is an issue in employment law um, all over the world. And there is, of course, a gradient here. There are places where first wave feminism has taken a deeper hold and the laws have been changed for a while and those changes have become normalized. But yeah. then there are also you know, second wave issues of sexual health and reproductive rights that have been you know, the focus of, of a lot of second wave, including reform of laws about the social sphere. And I think you know, now we're moving on to getting more refined in our critique of the way that power intersects in society. Um, but yeah, you have countries that are farther along that path and countries that are farther behind, but there's no country in the world that I can think of where women have full um, legal autonomy in a way that is equal or you know, similar to what men have with regards to reproductive rights and abortion access and, and inter non-interference of the state in their personal lives. Yeah, the egalitarian thing, because you can even argue right now with the stance that the United States has had with abortion um, or just with the way that uh, Planned Parenthood or um, abortion clinics have been attacked. You know, you could try to argue this or that, that, oh, it's it's legal. Roe v. Wade was passed. But the problem is, is that that particular right, which, by the way, it is a mainly female concern or mainly female uh, cisgender concern if you have a uterus, because you can also have, you know, we can get into that, but that is a certain right within this country if you want to talk about it in Western civilization. But yeah, um, oh, and one of my friends is from India, and let's just, she is pretty much a miracle because um, there's a rise in abortion of girls, right? Um, so there's even a issue of whether or not women will survive or in certain places because it's seen as more ideal to have male children 
What I find weird about questions like this, so the, there's a whole list of, I think the ba basic conclusion is everywhere in the world has some kind of issue in terms of equality or women having yeah. um, a justice on par with men, their, their access and things. Yeah. The, but there's, it, it seems to be a, a bit of a contradiction to me when the anti-feminist camp, people in the, in the anti-feminist camp who will say things like, there are only two sexes, therefore there are only two genders, and then, right. uh, and then say, and then want to claim that the law is exactly the same for both men and women. When you're saying that there are these inherent differences that are 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 biologically determined, and therefore are part of who all men and women are, so you can't, on the one hand, say a one size fits all system for laws on two people that you're saying are completely different. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you have to yeah. Know here that there will always we're all be... the same, but treat them differently. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, that's it. <laughs> one law for all of us. One law for all of us. But you're saying we're fundamentally different. So how can one law fit all of us? You know, especially on issues of of reproductive health and rights and access. So. Yeah, um, maybe, yeah there's this uh, awesome Jane Elliott. Uh, I love her, um, and I've talked about her, but she does this great example. Um, where people are like, oh, I don't want to see differences. We're all the same. And then she's like, invites a guy up, right? And then they're on stage. And she's like, you, just, you see any differences between this guy and me, right? And she's like, are you young? And he's like, yes. And it's like, do you like being seen as young? And he was like, yes. And he was also Latin. And he was like, do you, and you're Mexican, right? Do you like being seen as Mexican? Yes. And it's like, what other difference do you see? he, I can't get prostate cancer, right? It's the entirety of accepting differences and that's okay, right? But there is somewhat of, like you said, a denial, this whole uh, egalitarian, and then a denial of differences, but at the same time, pointing them out all the time. And you have to be a hypocrite if you don't want to accept like solid theories. It's just, it's just a fact. There's this idea of essentialism, which is that something is a, an, an inherent part of something. The idea that there is inherent maleness that is sort of objective and transcends, you know, all men and it connects them and it, it, it's, a, it's a thing that is stable and fixed and yeah. immutable and part of who you are. I have a lot of but I know what you're saying, yeah, that like, now you're a man, a man, 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 man. One could say that on the on the chromosomal level, that makes some sense. But when it comes to the social level, to say that there's something inherently male about being a man in a man's, you know, in a cis man's body, mm. um, there's just a, it, it doesn't, it kind of defies logic it, that we know that these things are mutable and they change over time. So it's, it's, a, it's like a, fall, a fallacy or an error to conflate something you find in nature with something you find in the social world. You know, yeah. just because there's the X and the Y doesn't mean that those are the only two qualities that can exist and everything about human nature has to fit into one and not the other. Oh, exactly. And if like there is like some universal truth of like manhood, then there wouldn't be examples of like, you know, one of the things I think about, you know, back in Greek days and you got Socrates, but back then maleness, part of his version of maleness uh, was having relationships with young men. Um, and that was seen as a bravado, even in Roman times of like, you know, it, it, like that was seen as a machismo, but also the appreciation of male love that was seen as a macho thing to do. So if there's this universal manness, it should have been like the same or very similar throughout time, but there's always been different social concept of what it is to be a man. And it's really interesting, that Greek idea, because of course people tend to focus on the homosexual sex part of it, but <laughs> what it represented, as you point out, is this idea of male love, and that male yeah. love was based on a notion of some kind of equality, that mm -hmm. there was a kind of appreciation for an equal, that someone who understood you on a level that you both could appreciate that was special and of course because women weren't educated they weren't allowed to be that that part of yeah. it yes um it is the case that that notion of a love between equals is very special but of course because of the way that patriarchal societies have been structured for most of human history women have been denied the opportunity and men have been denied the opportunity to experience that in a heterosexual way 
Yeah, yeah. And there's a big, like, I don't know, the whole thing, like, it makes sense when you hear Mangina because any type of guy, guy who shows any emotional connection with another guy, regardless of whether romantic interest, oh my God, that's effo. Like, you can't hug a guy. You can't, like, you know, cry with a guy. It's just like there's so many things that end up getting pent up energy. And it goes on the topic, too, of not only repressing, like, sexuality but repressing feelings and emotions in general that's not good for you yeah most definitely well to get on with the questions so i think you know uh, we yeah. have uh, places in the world basically everywhere in the world there is, yeah. a, there is a country <laughs> in the world where women and men experience justice that's appropriate and sort of specified for their particular experiences yeah. that's not something we've achieved yet 